I think at the heart of what we try to do in New Zealand is base our policies on a climate goal. It's not just a matter of reducing emissions, it's containing climate global warming. In this series, Reducing While Producing, we take you on a virtual farm tour to look at how the New Zealand agricultural sector is responding to the challenges of climate change and working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by increasing on-farm efficiency and producing more sustainably. In this episode, we look at how farmers can collaborate with policymakers, scientists and industry to enable continual emission reductions on farm in an increasingly complex agricultural landscape. Harry Clark is director of the New Zealand Agricultural Greenhouse Gas Research Centre and one of seven climate change commissioners appointed by the New Zealand government. New Zealand is very unusual as a developed country in that it's an agricultural economy still, which is reflected in its greenhouse gas profile. When we look at carbon dioxide equivalent emissions, when we turn all gases into this common currency of carbon dioxide, about a half of our emissions come from agriculture. Of that half, uh, around 80% of that is methane and 20% nitrous oxide. You know, agriculture is incredibly important to our economy. It's our biggest export earner, and you know, during the latest COVID pandemic, one of the things that's kept the economy going is the export of agricultural produce. So what we're trying to do is reduce emissions um, while at the same time continuing to make our contribution to global food security and uh, be a mainstay of the New Zealand economy. I think what we all have to accept is that in any approach to greenhouse gas reductions, we have to take a broad view. We have to take a view that looks at the economic implications of reducing emissions. What we are doing is adopting a slightly different approach. We have a net zero approach for the long-lived gases like carbon dioxide, but we have a separate target for the short-lived gases like methane. And although it's novel for a country, it's not novel scientifically. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in its one and a half degree report clearly shows that you have differential targets for different gases to reach the one and a half degree goal. Collaboration and partnership is key to New Zealand's response to the climate challenge. We're bringing producers, industry and policymakers together to develop and implement innovative and practical initiatives Hey, Waki Kanoa is a partnership between the government, the agriculture sector and Māori. And the mission for the partnership is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the agriculture sector and increase the agriculture sector's resilience to climate change. The partnership intends to do that by equipping farmers and growers with the tools and support that they need to reduce, manage and measure their greenhouse gas emissions and increase, maintain and recognise their sequestration and adapt to a changing climate. And doing all this in the context of a profitable and sustainable food and fibre sector within the context of a competitive international market. Hawaki Kanoa is a Māori whakatauki proverb and it means we're all in this together. It is a well-used whakatauki but it is important and does capture the essence of the, the Primary Sector Climate Action Partnership because we can only achieve the milestones and the objectives uh, and the mission if we all pull in the same direction. Farmers like Karen and Mick Williams are innovating to improve their on-farm practices with the support of research, investment and policy change. Farmers are very adaptable people and we're always confronting challenges, but we need a pathway to recognise um, firstly what, is, what are our emissions, what, what's my number out here when I look at my livestock component and the, and the methane emissions. He Waka Ikonawa will give me as a farmer some, some tools to use so that I can identify that and then we can look at mitigation strategies and ways that we can start to ramp back those emissions. And that will be in lots of you know, investment in, in research that will help us do that. And there will be ways that we'll need to adapt and change and think about things differently. Yes, we need to reduce our emissions. Yes, we need to continue to produce good, sustainable, healthy food. So somewhere there is a sweet spot and I want to help Hewaki Ikana find that. Measuring and mitigating greenhouse gas emissions on farm has its challenges. The key challenge to measuring greenhouse gas emissions on farm is that there's no practical way to actually measure 
greenhouse gas emissions on farm. So we're reliant on tools to estimate and to model those greenhouse gas emissions. There are a number of tools out there and at the moment Hiwaki Kanoa is doing work around the robustness of those tools. So the key challenge to mitigating greenhouse gas emissions on farm is that there's no one size fits all. New Zealand farming systems are so diverse, diverse within sectors and across farming types. And added into that, um, Māori land ownership has its in, um, other complexities. What's important as Hewaki Kanoa develops this framework to support emission reductions is that farmers are given the, the opportunities to choose the mitigations that work for their farming system and work for their farming system in the context of the other drivers that they are facing, such as um, drivers to improve freshwater quality, uh, drivers to uh, respond to biodiversity and all within the context of a profitable farming system. Giving farmers a strong voice within the climate change conversation is important. Farmers need to be at the table and contributing their insights and their experience in running their farming businesses because they are complex and large scale businesses with many levers and many balls in the air at one time and so many variables that we deal with including the weather. Not far from Karen and Mick's arable farm, dairy farmer John Stevenson has found the value of giving everyone a voice and collaborating to agree on solutions can't be underestimated. The collaboration between researchers and farmers and policy makers is absolutely critical going forward. It's something I feel really passionate about because there are intricacies in terms of how decisions and regulation are able to be implemented on farm. There are requirements in terms of what policy makers need to achieve from a national perspective, but there are also the collaboration between what our scientists are going to deliver us and farmers' ability to do that on farmers is absolutely critical. One of the unique things about New Zealand farming systems is that we don't have any subsidies from government around how we produce our products, so there needs to be alignment around our sustainability goals and what our customers are willing to pay. And at the moment there is an increasing alignment around that and that really helps with getting farmers on board with this climate change and environmental sustainability journey. For us, in terms of the ultimate outcome for collaboration is realistic implementation. If we can deliver a solution on farm which achieves our climate objectives, that's absolutely what we will try and do. It's what our markets want, ultimately it's what our public wants, and farmers are really willing to do that. So we need the science, the technology and the development to enable us to do that. There's a significant amount of work happening in that space at the moment. And for us as farmers, we are, we're getting to the point where we're almost really anxious to see what's, what's going to come out of that. And you know, we would urge further investment in that because that's the missing piece. We need to collaborate, we need to be able to have a solution which we can deliver, ultimately deliver to our cows on farm. Richard and Wendy Ridd run a 260 hectare dairy farm in the Manawatu. From their perspective, collective intelligence and effort is needed as the complexity of the challenge to continue making reductions increases. We shouldn't be taking solid approaches, you know, we shouldn't be sitting in our own countries working out what we need to do, we need to take a collective view look at the natural resource and make some decision making around that and support agriculture and grow food in this country that is the most efficient in the world at doing it. Farmers have been on the journey for a number of years. So many farms have made system changes or picked the low hanging fruit out of their system to make better decisions for our environment, profitability, that's where they go hand in hand. Now we're getting to a stage that we are operating as a whole really good efficient systems here in New Zealand so our changes are becoming a lot more complex to understand and that we need to be aware of where our farmers actually sit at an efficiency level to make sure that we're not going to compromise profitability and obviously our environmental impact. And it's also about farmers appreciating and understanding policymakers roles as well. We don't really have the opportunity to do that if we can't meet in the middle ground somewhere or come out to the farm. It's a good place to start. On one hand, a holistic approach to mitigating environmental impact will help most. We look at the environment holistically. It's so interconnected. And, and one thing that we can't fall into the trap of is, is fixing an issue with biodiversity without considering that impact on water quality 
or soils or our emissions. Collectively, industry, government, um, Māori, all need to be kind of aware of that and interplay and make sure that any decision we make also explores the impacts on those other components. On the other hand, every farm has its own individual challenges and opportunities for improvement. One solution for all isn't necessarily the best way forward. I think as we look to face our climate challenges as a nation going forward, I'm firmly of the belief that we need to look at livestock reduction at a catchment level because every farm may not have the same characteristics as what we have here and there may be a farm down the road that potentially is on the borderline of being suitable for dairy farming and can go into something else. Or whether perhaps we can be a bit more innovative and therefore probably have better outcomes which make us more efficient farmers because I don't want to spread myself too thin by learning three or four other industries. I, I believe that that would detract from our ability to be the very best dairy farmers that we can be. In New Zealand, te ao Māori, the Māori worldview, kaitiakitanga, the guarding of our natural resources and other cultural considerations, have much to add to our approach. Mavis Mullins Fano, her family, have been farming in the Dannyberg region for generations. Tēnā koutou, ko Mavis Mullins ho. my name is Mavis Mullins. Ko Ruahine te maunga, the Ruahine Ranges are my mountains. Ko Manawatu te awa, the Manawatu River is my river. Ko Tamaki Nui Arua uh, te kainga, so I live in a small place called Dannyberg. Ko Mavis Mullins ho anō, my name is Mavis. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Kia ora koutou katoa, uh, my sincere greetings. So we're here in Dannyverk, Tamaki Nui Arua, a small town, southern Hawke's Bay. We have 150 acres where we farm dairy cows, a Frisian cross dairy unit. Because this farm has been in our family for generations, mai rā nō, to the beginning of time they say, it carries the wairua or the spirit of those ancestors. When I look out onto these lands, I feel my grandmother, I feel my great-grandfather, I feel my father. I often think that uh, the decisions we make in farming are what I call mukapuna decisions or grandchildren decisions. And I often think if we looked out onto the lands that we're responsible for and see the faces of our grandchildren, that's how we treat it. For Māori, our, our time horizons are intergenerational, so we don't actually see things just in a context of first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, three year, five year, ten. We do break that down to that, but actually we're looking intergenerationally. That gives you opportunity to consider things in a much more calibrated way. Often a three year time frame is where a lot of policy comes from. And in fact, when we look at some policies that have come forward, they're so short term that it, it's almost like a skimming of the surface. So you might get the outcome, but it's not sustainable. Whereas if you have that longer horizon, you can go deeper to ensure that it's, you know, whatever the outcome you're looking for can be a lot more deeply embedded. That's the challenge we have here with policy and farming in particular, because this is a biological system. It doesn't do three years. It's seasonal, and then even the seasons have a bigger cycle. And until we start thinking about that in terms of policy, we're always just going to be piecemealing. Further north, the need for Māori to be able to engage in policy is strongly felt. Tēnā koutou, ko rakei poho taiaro tēnei, uh, ko te kaiwhakahaere o tēnei uh, pāmu, farm, Awaii Pukawa, no dera no mai. Kia ora everybody, my name is Rake Pohotairo and I am the chairman of Waihi Pukawa Station. Our tikanga means we look after the land first, we look after our people whilst looking after the land. The land is our tūranga waiwai. Tūranga waiwai means the place to put your feet and our tūranga waiwai is the most important thing, that's our identity as a people. It's very important for, our, for Māori to be part of the equation um, around greenhouse gases. We have the Iwi Leaders Forum, which has direct engagement with the Crown. And so those are our tribal leaders. So we are farm within a tribal area and our tribal leaders represent our view. 
So it's very important that we update our tribal leaders to represent our view, represent what's going on here in this small farm station, to take that lend to directly with the Crown. It's a, very important to have that engagement and it, um, that political engagement. Involvement at the industry level is also crucial. Industry bodies like Dairy NZ are getting behind farmers with research, knowledge sharing and extension programs to enable change. Policy implementation is so important. It's not just about the policy, it's about how it's applied by regional councils within a farm. We want the direction of travel, which is to improve our impact on the environment, implemented in such a way that farmers can actually do these things in a way that makes sense on their farms. So having a voice at the policy table is really important. Dairy NZ's ability to understand a farm system and bring that evidence to the policy makers is really vital. We believe that we need to make changes that it's important for our sector, it's important for the sector's future. Farmers need to be involved in coming up with the solutions for reducing greenhouse gas emissions on farm. If they're involved, then those solutions will be practical, they'll be adopted by farmers and they'll be enduring. If we want to get people together, the first thing I think is that people have to leave egos at the door because sometimes I think scientists think they know everything. Sometimes I think policy people think they know everything, and sometimes I think farmers think they know everything. I mean, this isn't rocket science, but it is about people getting over themselves to address an issue that can have serious impact on our future generations. We can't have that. We can't have our name attached to that. So, you know, if we can at least be open and willing to listen and try to understand, I have no doubt we'll get to the right answers. New Zealand's diverse and dynamic agricultural landscape requires us to work together to respond to our evolving and increasingly complex climate challenges. You've seen how collaboration is enabling continual improvement in on-farm practices in New Zealand. What could collaboration help you achieve? Join the discussion.